We all know that controlling Flight Simulator is pretty hard, especially when using a keyboard. And then on top of that, if you want to control for example a drone, it becomes even harder because there are a lot of shortcuts. In this video I will show you how you can use your Stream Deck to control the drone camera. Let's roll the intro and then let's look at how to do that. As you might have already figured out, controlling the drone using the keyboard can be pretty hard. And that's due to the large number of say, shortcuts which you can use to control the drone. Let me show the settings over there, right? So if we go to the settings and if we go to the controls, you will find the keyboard over here and there you can search for a drone. And as you can see, it are a lot of keys which are assigned to a lot of functions. In some cases, I would say it are single keys. In some cases, there are, I would say, two keys which you need to press, but it isn't relatively easy, right? You can't remember that shift T is to increase the drone translation speed and shift R to increase the drone rotation speed. That's something which is pretty hard to, let's say, remind. So what I did for you is I created a profile in Stream Deck to control most of these functions. Not all of these functions are working. I'm not sure if I would say those functions are supposed to work because I do think that some of the functions are not even possible currently in Flight Simulator 2024. But hey, I simply uh, want to show you how it works and how you can get the maximum out of your Stream Deck to control the drone view. So to do that, we of course need to switch to, in this case, the Stream Deck application. So the Stream Deck application, for those who are unaware, that's the application where you can create your own profiles. And to do that, what you need to do is you need to go to the top left and there you can say new profile, which will create an empty profile. And using that empty profile, you can configure everything which you want, which you would like to do. Now, to navigate to that, I would say a new option, what you need to do is you need to add an option, uh, which is called switch profile, which you will find over here. If you're searching in the top right, search for profile, you find the switch profile and then you can drag it onto the frame and then you can configure it. And the configuration is relatively easy. You define a title and you define the profile to where you want to navigate to. So once you've done that, you of course can press that button. Let me do it. And in my case, it will bring me to this one. Now you might say, hey, this looks really cool, all those colors, but how do I get them? Because I don't have them. Well, let me quickly show you. What you can do is you can go to uh, the marketplace for Agato. You search for the simple bright colors from Rob Clifton Harvey, and then you will get all these nice colors. You can press the open in Stream Deck option that will install the profile. And after that, you can use it. Let me show you how to use it. Because for everything which we want to do is we need to press a key. So if you search for key, you will find two options, right? As search for key in the top right, you will find the hotkey and the hotkey switch. So the hotkey is to activate a key or a command. So that's the one we're going to add. And once we've done that, you can select it and you can press the button on the bottom to configure the profile or the button in this case. So I can say open Stream Deck icon library. There I'll find the three uh, default ones from Elgato, but I also find the one which I just installed. And using the buttons, I can quickly change the colors, right? Relatively easy, nothing special. Once you've done that, you need to configure the title and the hotkey to assign. The hotkey to assign simply the button or button combination which you're going to press. And the title is really, I would say, the title which is shown here. By default, the uh, keys being pressed are also the title, but that's not very useful. For the, I would say, kind of formatting, you can also use this uh, T, right, with the arrow. You can show the uh, title on the bottom, in the middle, or in the center. And by, besides that, you can also change the, uh, say, font size, and also sometimes the font formatting options, as well as the color, right? So keep that in mind that you can completely customize it. In this case, I'm going to delete it because I configured already a lot of things. So the first button we're going to configure is the drone button itself. The drone button itself will be activating the drone mode. And you can do that by pressing the uh, shift and the X. Don't worry, I will post a full overview of all the keys in the description of this video so you can look at your own pace. If you don't do this, it will simply not work. So keep that in mind. 
Then the second two buttons are the follow and the lock mode. So the follow mode is assigned hotkey five and the lock mode is assigned key number six. The follow mode will simply follow the aircraft while the lock mode stays locked on a certain point of the aircraft or vehicle. We will go into a future video into that a little bit more in detail because that's too much time and also it's deviating too much from this topic. Now the other two buttons are the up, which is the letter E and the down, which is the letter Q. So let me quickly show you what that does. So we're gonna go to Flight Simulator. We're gonna go back to this uh, nice view, right? We're gonna press 100 times escape. And the first thing we're gonna do is press the drone option. Once we've done that, I can press the up to go up and down, well, to go down. Those are the first two buttons which are really useful, right? Which you can use when creating pictures or when creating, let's say, a video about it. But wouldn't it also be nice that we can zoom in and out uh, to the aircraft? That's also something which you can do, of course. So what I did is I created two buttons, zoom in and zoom out. So zoom in is the shift and the uh, letter O from Oscar. And you can see that you can also press the shift enter to say divide the text up, uh, amongst two lines. And the shift plus the letter uniform to zoom out. Let's have a look again how that works in Flight Simulator. So again, we're still in the draw mode. So now I can zoom in and I can zoom out. So I've already have, let's say, four nice functionalities, up and down, zoom in and out. But there's more, of course, because we sometimes also want to look from the top. And that's where the top view comes in. So the top view is a special view because it will simply, let's say, take the drone and then look what's below the drone. In this case, there's nothing, right? Because we're not above the, cho uh, the chopper. But as you can see, I would say this could be, I would say, a really nice option. The only downside is that resetting it can be pretty hard. And that's why there is a reset option, which will reset it to the default position of the drone, which is behind the helicopter in this case. So let me show you how I configure them. So I'm going to zoom in again, then press the top view, which is the letter F from Foxtrot. And the reset is the letter R from Romeo. So those are the buttons which you can assign. And again, don't worry, I will put a full description of all the keys which I used in the bottom of this video. Now, the next ones are really to move the drone around. So forward will be the W from Whiskey. Left will be the A from Alpha. Back will be the uh, S from Shara. And right will be the D from Delta. So let's have a look at how that works in this case. So if we now press the A, I will go left, the D, I will go right, the W, the whiskey, I will go in front, and the S, I will go backwards, right? Really useful, but hey, if I now want to make a turn, I can do it. And that's where the next button set comes into play. So the next button set are the yaw keys, right? So the yaw up, which is the arrow up, the yaw left is the arrow left, the yaw down is the arrow down, and the yaw right is the arrow right. So once you configure that and go to Flight Simulator, you can do a few nice things, right? So your left is this, right? You simply turn left, your right, as you can imagine, is moving to the right. Your down is this one and your up is this one, right? That's really cool because what you now can do is simply say, okay, hey, I want to move to the right, but I want to roll to the left, which will give you this, let's say, a behavior, right? And they can really, let's say, push it slow. I would say without the Xbox controller, it goes much smoother, but we're also going to look at how you can modify the speed, which I would say allows you to, let's say, kind of control it a little bit better. Uh, this is how to do it using the control keys, but of course, using the Xbox controller or another controller gives you a little bit more flexibility because those are a little bit less sensitive. Now, is it everything? No, of course not. There are far more buttons to configure. And that's where we come into the pitches. So we've got pitch forward, which is the letter I from India. Then the left, which is the U from uniform. The pitch backward, the K from kilo. And the uh, right is the O from Oscar. And besides that, there's also pit pitch reset, which is the space and the shift key when we press them together. So how will that help? Well, again, going to flight simulator. So if we do pitch left, it will be like this. Pitch right will be the other side. Pitch backward will be like this and pitch forward will be like this. But you can imagine that in some scenarios you want to reset the view. That's where the pitch reset comes into play. And this is how you can control it. 
Now we've looked at multiple things. You already saw that the speed is sometimes crazy fast. And that sometimes is not what you want because you want to really approach the helicopter slow or you want to do a review of something and want to look inside the helicopter or inside the aircraft. And then you want to have the speed slowing down. And that's where the next four buttons come into, right? So we've got the uh, increased rotor speed, increase speed, decrease rotor speed, and decrease speed. So if we look at the first two, right? Increase rotor, increase speed, sorry, is the shift and the letter T while decreasing the speed is the shift and the letter G. Increasing the rotor speed is the shift plus the letter R and decreasing the uh, rotor speed is the shift and the letter F from Foxtrot. Let's look into Flight Simulator to see how that works. So we're gonna go in Flight Simulator again. I'm gonna show you the drone view by clicking on this menu, right? So I'm gonna simply go to the drone view and then look at the numbers over here, right? So switch to the showcase because that's not always happening. I would say this kind of panel is a little bit buggy if you ask me. And then if I press these options, right? Decrease the speed or increase the speed, you can see that those are moving as well as increase and decrease the rotor speed. They are changing. The zoom option, unfortunately, I figured out that it doesn't work correctly, but if you figured out how to co correctly make this work, then let me know because I'm really curious about that one. So I'm gonna close the window and show you how that works, right? So currently I would say moving uh, to the aircraft and from the aircraft goes really fast. So now I pressed decrease speed for a long time and you can see that it already starts to move, let's say relatively slow. But you can still see that the rotor speed is kind of crazy fast. So if I decrease rotor speed, you'll also see that if you press it too long, like I did, you can't even turn, but if you press it a few times up, then you will get a really smooth view, which you can use, let's say, to view at multiple things, create some nice pictures or create a nice video about that. So that's how all those buttons will work and will help you to create really nice things. You can also see that it affects the yaw up and down. That's really nice. And that's also where we end this video. So in this video, we looked at the drone view and how to use the multiple options uh, which are available uh, on your Stream Deck to control the drone camera, because that's what it's called. Relatively easy, but gives you a lot of flexibility, especially if you don't have an Xbox controller, uh, then it's definitely a method which you could investigate. Of course, keep in mind that I use the Stream Deck XL. So if you've got a smaller Stream Deck, you might decide to, let's say, put less buttons in or create multiple dashboards in it, or maybe folders in it, because that's also an option to go to the different views. But this allows you to, let's say, kind of easily control the drone um, with simply pressing a button. I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, then also consider to watch some other videos on my channel about Flight Simulator 2024, and I hope to see you back next time.